the Dead Sea Scrolls are a cache of documents that were found in the desert, uh, the Judean desert of Jordan, near the Dead Sea, uh, over the course of a number of years, starting in 1947 and running until about 1956. They started showing up on the uh, antiquities market and were purchased uh, through a long circuitous route. Eventually some ended up in the hands of a monk in America and another one in uh, the hands of a uh, a professor at Hebrew University, and eventually came to light, and uh, more and more scrolls were discovered. So 1947 to 1956 is when uh, this large repository of, of documents was found. It was stunning when the discovery was made. It was early. Uh, some people worried about whether they were authentic or very uh, important, but pretty quickly they were identified as truly ancient and stunning importance. In fact, uh, the great uh, William Foxwell Albright, uh, one of the great archaeologists of the 20th century, congratulated those uh, involved in their early uh, discovery that they had made the discovery of the century in terms of, of archaeological research. And in terms of the history of the Bible and the study of early Judaism, it's hard to overestimate the importance of the scrolls. For the most part, the scrolls that were discovered uh, are materials that we didn't know of prior to their discovery. So there's a number of these texts and about 25% of the scrolls that were recovered from these 11 different caves uh, are biblical scrolls of one sort or another. They contain compositions that ended up in the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible. So, you know, everything from Genesis through Daniel with the exception of Esther though there's some debates about that. There might be some small texts that are fragmentary that could be Esther or related to Esther. It's hard to be sure about that. Um, but in any event, every other uh, book of the uh, Old Testament is attested among the Dead Sea Scrolls found near this archaeological site called Qumran. One of the questions is the relationship of these texts to the archaeological site and the nature of the archaeological site. A lot of debate about that, and that debate is ongoing. But many people continue to think that the scrolls are, in fact, related somehow to the, to the community that lived in this archaeological site or its an environs. It wouldn't have been able to house everyone, probably, so some may have lived nearby in caves but used this as a special site. And one of the dominant hypotheses still is that these people who lived at Qumran were a group of Jews that were affiliated with the Essenes. And this is a group that we never hear of directly in the New Testament, but we, also, we do learn of from Josephus, and that were fairly numerous in first century Palestine. And it appears that if these are Essenes, that this might be an extreme form of Essene, a kind of splinter group or a particularly devout group uh, that may have been um, celibate, that seems to have had a long period of initiation into its community, up to two years, uh, very strict in its uh, organization and hierarchy, and very concerned with purity, pure in food, pure drink, and with ritual purity. Uh, so lots of uh, water was present in this site, ritual baths that they cleansed themselves uh, by. So. That's still one of the dominant hypotheses, though you can also find a number of people who would differ about that, the identification of the Essenes or the Qumran people as Essenes or the relationship of the site to these texts. Some of the caves are, in fact, found at some distance from the site, but many of the caves are right near the site. They may have been a library for the community or they may have been the place where the community hid the scrolls prior to its destruction by the Romans. So about 25% of these scrolls are biblical scrolls, and they are stunning in their importance because they are so early. For example, the earliest complete codex of the Hebrew Bible is Codex Leningradensis. It's about, dated to about 1008 AD, AD. So that's a long time from David, say. It's almost 2,000 years from David, 1,800 years or so from Isaiah of Jerusalem. Whereas the Dead Sea Scrolls per, per, preserved a, a full copy of the book of Isaiah, all fi 66 chapters and 56 columns in very good uh, condition, 
that dates to about 250 BC. So that's uh, stunningly early uh, compared to the version we have in Codex Leningradensis. It's over a thousand years earlier and was remarkably similar in the main to the version we have in Codex Leningradensis, testifying to a kind of stability in the scribal tradition. So that's an important point about the biblical scrolls. However, there was also found other versions of Isaiah at Qumran, including the uh, Isaiah scroll B, the second Isaiah scroll, which is not as close to the Isaiah scroll that's found, uh, the version of Isaiah that's found in, in Codex Leningradensis. So what happens in fact is in the, in the biblical scrolls is we find uh, that the biblical text was a bit more fluid at the time of the first century, the time of Jesus, than it eventually is later, that it stabilizes as it moves through history. And we see that in Isaiah, but we also see it in, in all kinds of different texts at Qumran, the Psalms, the Torah scrolls, and so forth. This is so very important material to translate from because it's our earliest and our best manuscripts in many cases. The rest of the scrolls, the 75% of other scrolls, included everything from material that didn't end up in the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament proper, but in the Apocrypha, some texts that are known from the Old Testament pseudepigrapha, but a vast majority of texts that we never knew of ever before, many of which had to do with the life of the community, its rules, its hymns, uh, its uh, stories, stories that are rewritten that are similar to the Bible but rewritten, and this is the vast majority. These texts are very crucial in casting important light on Judaism in the first century uh, in the time of Jesus and, and prior to the turn of the eras. It, it shows again the, the nature of the material that's available and casts really in, in calculable light on what Judaism was like. And so we know not only that there were Essenes, but there were also these Qumran people, and we have a sense of the rich diversity of Judaism at the time that Jesus lived. And so one quick practical result of all that is that it's important not to monolithize the Judaism of Jesus' day, but to realize it was quite variegated and denominationalized, if you will. And among other things, it would be wrong to say that everyone in Jesus' time expected one Messiah who was a Davidic royal Messiah. We know this in part from the scrolls, which uh, indicate they expected not one, but two Messiahs, a Messiah of David and a Messiah of Aaron. That is a royal Messiah, but a priestly Messiah as well. So the scrolls give important light on the translation of the Bible, the understanding of the Old Testament, and the understanding of the New Testament with the light it casts on Palestinian Judaism at this time.